So a little bit of a story time here. About 10 years ago, I made this cell phone case. And the man I made it for used it for several years. He was happy with it. Um, he got a different phone. It didn't fit in it. So he gave it to someone else who had a phone that did fit into it. And that man used it for several years. And he's gotten a new phone that now doesn't fit into it. So I'm remaking a case that I made for somebody who gave it to someone else. And now that person wants to get a case from me. And of course, I'm getting paid for it. Uh, because that's how you get new customers in leatherworking. But this case has held up fairly well, except for the fact that it's gotten a little bit more flexible than you would normally expect these to be. The back of it's still rigid. Clip is still strong. Stitching held up. So all in all, pretty good. There's some things that I've done better since I made this case. I've learned a little bit more about how to make them and get a better finish on some of the things. But for the most part, considering the advantage, the amount of use that it's taken, it's in really good shape. Uh, so I need to make another one of these. And my normal method of making these involves making a leather block, the size and shape of the person's cell phone. So I was given a tracing of the phone by who, the original customer, who is the go-between on this whole deal. Uh, and the block I have isn't quite right for it. It's not quite long enough. And it's a little too thick for the phone that he wants me to make it for. So I'm going to have to make a new leather block, cut some pieces out, and make another one of these cases. And I figured this was a good opportunity to update that video that I did now that I've got a better camera. All right, making these leather blocks is just a really simple matter. I just take a tracing of the phone that I got from the customer, um, mark it by just punching a bunch of dots through along the line with the scratch hole, and then I'll cut it out. It's just a piece of scrap from the scrap bin. I'll use layers of it until I get up to the thickness that I need for the phone that I need to make it for. This one's going to be rough. And now that I've got these pieces cut, I'm just going to glue them together back to back. Bevel the edges just a little bit to take off the square corners. And sand on it a little bit to even everything out. So. Now in this case, my cell phone case patterns are made kind of generic. I have a couple different fronts, a couple different backs. As you can see, I cut them out of uh, linoleum scraps. I really like that for patterns that I'm going to use again and again. Uh, but this one here fits this pretty well. It's long enough for the phone. It's actually just a little bit longer. That's fine because I'll just trim off any excess after I've got it shaped and stitched. I'll just trim to, to match. Um, the front works better with the smaller one rather than the larger one because this isn't going to be a very thick phone. So that's going to work well. I'm going to have some extra around here down at the edge, but like I said, I'm trimming that off anyway. So as I said, these patterns sort of mix and match and there's no real set. This is how it has to be on these. You just want something wide enough for the phone that it covers the whole back of it. Um, or usually a lot of people will put their screen around to that side. And this one wouldn't quite cover all the way up to the top. So you'd have the top of the flap of the case in against the screen rather than against the bezel around it. So we're gonna go with these pieces of patterns. And I'm gonna cut those out of four to five ounce leather. Now I don't want just four to five ounce leather, I'm gonna be lining it. So I want two pieces of four to five ounce leather for the front and two pieces for the back. And I'll put those together and make a piece that's about eight to 10 ounces. It'll be about eight, nine, really, probably, with this leather. So I'm gonna mark one of these just rough cut, and that'll be my lining piece. And I'll mark one of them exact, and that'll be my front piece. Now, exact is kind of a relative term on these, because again, like I said, once I shape it, I'm going to trim it all off. 
And we shall do the same thing with this piece. Mark one of them close. That piece I'll mark these three holes on. There, there, and there. Those three holes are for the spring clip. And depending on the glue you use, you may or may not have to let it completely dry before you can wet it down to shape it. Otherwise it could delaminate on you. Uh, with barge cement, which is what I'm working with, that's usually not too much of a problem, but you do want to let it pretty much dry. Um, but of course, with most contact cements like barge cement, you let it pretty much dry before you even stick the pieces together. The one caution on this also is that uh, any glue you get on the front on your grain surface could cause problems when you go to do your um, tooling or dyeing the piece. So you want to be kind of careful not to get too sloppy with it. And as usual with contact cement, it's always best to let it go until uh, it starts to look like it's drying up a little bit. It's still got some shininess to it, but it's lost that really wet look of shininess. Um, and then it'll just stick together basically instantly. The only problem with that is you don't have a lot of time to reposition it if you do manage to stick it together in the wrong spot. So you gotta be a little careful with it. A little bit of trimming on this. All right, here's another one of those order of operation problems. This is when I usually want to do some work on finishing this top, even though it's not tied or finished yet. I want to at least edge bevel it and kind of round it out some. Um, but this outside edge is all going to get trimmed, so I don't want to do any of that. But on the front and back, I'm going to take the edge beveler around up here in what's going to be the opening of the case. And then when I have it wet to shape it, I'll round it out a little bit with the slicker. All right, now that we've got this shaped, I'm going to wet it down, really soak it down good, um, and then we can go ahead and actually mold it. And as I said, this is also when I want to go ahead and round out these edges on the top. It'll be easy enough to dye them later. It'll be a little tricky to finish them because I don't want to knock any of my shaping out of it by really working on it later. I want to go ahead and get it rounded out now. Now I'm going to let this go and sit and dry for, it might be an hour or so, because um, I want it to get back to where I can tool and stamp on it. So I want this surface to start to look dry again. It, right now it's too wet, and if I go to stamp this, I'll get mushy, blurry impressions. They'll look good right when I stamp them, but then as the leather's drying, they'll just kind of change. And like I said, you lose all your details. It looks sort of blurry. So you don't want to stamp when it's too wet like this. But what I do want is I want this side to be the drier side. So I'm going to turn it over and put that side down. And I'm going to let it dry like that. And hopefully this side will dry out more than the side that's down against the marble. Thank you. 
All right, now that I've got the stamping done, which I used the block as an anvil basically while I stamped it, um, it's time to go ahead and die and finish these pieces. And then we can set our clip and glue this together and trim it and get it all ready to put together. A little more work out of order here. I'm going to finish this edge by dyeing it with some show brown dye and then using gum drag and slicking it. But I'm not going to finish any of the other edges yet because that has to be after I stitch it together and grind them to match. But this edge will be really hard to finish later because it's going to be against this piece. So I have to finish it now. I'll start off stitching around this top edge and then I'll go ahead and stitch the other pieces together. One little trick I don't mention very often, uh, especially with sewing machine thread, is to just take a lighter real quick to those ends that stick out, and they will just kind of shrink up and disappear into the leather. For this other part, I need to swap to a different presser foot. Instead of this one that goes down on both sides, I need one that just goes on one side. That way I can stitch right up against my part that's raised there. Another important thing I was doing is I stitched it with this inside of it. Um, I had a lot of trouble with these cases not fitting right because the thing shifted in or out while I was gripping it and squeezing it to try and get it to uh, feed through the machine. And I learned that if I kept these in here, I could keep it nice and tight against that and then it would fit good whenever it was done. <laughs> 